questions so my plan is to go through them first and as once they are done we we can talk if if you have any additional questions okay sounds good okay so i have to do the housekeeping also so let me invite add other people who are joining okay so these are weekly sessions that uh, and this is the third one in that series and it's just open discussions we haven't decided what we want to talk about uh, in advance but as we go forward if there are some specific topics that we want to talk about i'll be happy to kind of prepare a session on those so as till now we have done three and this is the third one on the first one there were three people we had a good chat on the last one there were five people who attended we talked about uh, table sync schema that session was recorded and available on youtube and in this one we'll first go through the questions that people have submitted and then we can talk about anything else that any of you want to talk about so the first question that was submitted by rohan was around task scheduler uh, in business central 14 and the question was that job queue runs at a particular time through scheduled task and then at the next run time the it it kind of deletes itself and uh, the schedule option turned to no when it is supposed to be turned to yes now i don't see rohan in this meeting but i have tested it during the week in business central 14 and i didn't i was not able to replicate the problem and this feature is also available in business central if you are using business central saas or on prem so let's first quickly try to see it so that rohan can see it um, in the recording maybe later so what i have done is i have created a table with two fields call entry number and item number with the primary key as entry number and then a code unit that i'm going to schedule in job queue which copies all the item numbers into this new table only if the boolean cost is adjusted is set to false and to test it multiple time i have added a loop that at one when we run it for the first time it only adds one item then it runs second time then it adds only one more item and and goes like that so that we can test his question so let's see what's in this table right now and this table right now is empty there is no entry number and no item number so i'll switch it to view and then we'll schedule this code unit in the task scheduler or job queues let's quickly do that so i'm creating a new job queue entry and as i said earlier you either do it on dynamics nav or business central on prem or saas these options will remain same code unit and then my code unit number is 6000 next one and I don't have a parameter. I don't want to set any of those, and I just want to run it every day. And then I want to run it after every, let's say, two minute, one minute. I don't want to spend more time. And I change status to ready. So now this is ready, and this should be running in. now any time so let's refresh it and it ran so let's see there is one record that's get added because that code got executed from the job queue so let's see what is it 
changing its schedule option to no as rohan's question was but i don't see that's changing so now it will run now anytime so anyone else have any questions on job queue while we are waiting for this to run a job queue entries okay so let's give it some time okay so that's ran now the time if you see it's changed to 107 let's refresh it here and there are two items so it's actually working and as we go through uh, other slides we can come back and see how many uh, is it actually working or not so rohan i'm unable to replicate it on business central 14 uh if you have a specific scenario and you can be in the session next time we can surely talk about it maybe see your screen to fix the issue if there is any let's move to the next question and this question is from sahid and i guess sahid was here last time and he is here again okay and the question is around how we customize uh purchase order report using world template and visual studio code in business central so you cannot do it from visual studio code on a base microsoft report but you'll be able to do it from the client in dynamics nav uh if i'm not wrong 2016 and higher and on all the versions of business central so let's quickly see what i mean by that so you cannot modify the base reports in business central that's kind of the first part of the question uh you can only add a new layout or a design to your report based on the data set which is built by microsoft so if you want to modify purchase order report or any report you have to look for a page called custom report layouts once you open this page there will be some by default or may not be based on what data base you are using and then you can add a new entry here and choose the report for which you want to design a new layout so let's see if i can find purchase order report yeah i cannot so let me quickly check what is purchase order report is id is so purchase report order id in base cronus is 1322 so if i want to create a new layout for that report i'll key in that number and then the, you have two options i then either you can create a custom world layout or you can create a custom rdlc layout so it's up to you what you want click on the option that you want and click okay and there will be a new entry added here for that report which is copy of built in layout and i can rename it to say demo layout and then you can click on this edit layout which will open your microsoft word where you will get the default microsoft layout which you can tweak or you can design your own so this is what's available from the microsoft if you have to make some field bold color some fields on this world layout or design from beginning then you can you need to go to developer option and xml mapping and here in this option you will find the whole data set for that base report from microsoft and based on these options you can change the layout the way you want it 
so just to look at it i'm just changing it to let's say yellow and this one also is yellow once you have done whatever changes you want to make you can close this and this will save the layout in the database now once the layout is saved you need to make sure that the your custom layout runs for this you will have to go to report selections and this is only for email body but it's custom layout uh layout report layout selection here you can define that if you have multiple layouts for a report which one you want to use when user runs it so we were working on report 1322 i default it is said that when a user runs a purchase order report it will use the microsoft defined world layout you can change it by changing this option to custom layout and then choose the layout that you build which is this and click okay and that change is now applied for the purchase order report so let's quickly go and check purchase orders and try to print this now oh, let's preview this so if you see that the changes that we have done on that world layout are now visible here so two settings that you need to set one is using the custom report layout you can design either the world layout or the rdlc layout in dynamics nav and also in business central on prem and sas and then using the layout selection you can choose your custom layout so that it applies and it's available for users so shahid does, does that answer your question you are here uh the report you exported uh is not the same i mean uh, my layout is different i mean what you exported is this, this is the layout i'm wanting because there is picture and there are other things but my layout is different i don't know why uh, it's happening yeah so it's based on what report id you are using so in dynamics nav or in business central there are multiple reports for purchase order so if you look in nav yes i i use the same on p22 like you use on p22 so then it also maybe depends on uh, which version and which localized database you are using this is us database microsoft uh, dynamics nav bc14 us so if you are using any other localization that might have an impact but you can design it okay. the way you want it it's not mandatory to use what microsoft have so you can come to custom report layout selection uh and then start it from scratch you don't have to follow what microsoft have if you want to create your own report layout that's also possible you can edit the layout and delete it and then build it from scratch if you want that's not a problem okay, okay. so the next question was again from you and it was around unable to download symbol in visual studio code on prem installation bc14 so there are two three things that you need to check before you uh if you face this issue one of them is here on your service tier where it's around uh in the development tab this boolean should be set which is enable developer endpoint 
And if there I is a... I this to you. Okay, that's good. So then we move next. And after that, we can open it for questions. The last one was from Keshav. And Keshav had a question around data upgrade, uh, data migration in Dynamics Nav. And in, I don't see Keshav here now. But just to give a perspective, you can migrate from any versions of Dynamics Nav to Business Central. Uh, there is a path defined by Microsoft that you can use. And I used this slide in one of my sessions earlier. So I'll kind of uh, revisit that, that slide. So currently, the latest version available for Business Central is Business Central 16 on prem. And on SAS, it's 16.3 right now. You can upgrade to Business Central 16 SAS from on prem 15 or on prem 14. There is a replication path which is available from Microsoft. If you are not on Business Central 16, 15, or 14, and you are using any of these versions, which are 15, 16, 17, or 18, there is one step upgrade path to Business Central 14 from any of these versions. If you or your customer is still not there, then it adds one more layer of migration path from where you can go to 2015 and then BC 14 and 16. And in the same way, you can come from any versions of Dynamics Nav till Business Central 16. So there is a migration path, if that was a question. I don't know because he is not here. And you can find all these paths in your product DVD. Like this is Business Central 14 CU 10 product DVD. There is a upgrade folder which contain migration path objects for the versions that you that we saw in the slide, which is uh, 13, NAV 2018, NAV, 20, uh, NAV 2018, 2017, 2016, and 2015. So you can follow this cycle and go back to the version where your client is and then upgrade or migrate your customer data to the latest and greatest version. So those are the questions that are already posted and maybe I'll go one by one. And if you have any questions, then we can talk about it. So Garima, you have any questions? No, Saurav. Thank you. Okay. Keshav, any questions? Uh, yes, sir. I wanted to know uh, how to upgrade, how to data migrate in uh, nav version when we are upgrading to in navision, not in BC. So, data migration as an data migration as I sh showed you, th these will be the objects which are available on the product DVD, and you should always look from the target version where you want to go and come back to the version where you are going. Like if you want to upgrade to BC 14, then yes. see from which version you can upgrade to BC 14, which is 13 nav uh, 2018, 2017, 16 and 15. If you are not in any of these versions, then look at that product DVD and you will see the previous uh, version upgrade objects. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, Nishant, do you have any questions? No, okay. And then, and then I see Christine. Is that correct? I'm spelling it correct. Yeah. Uh, 
is it my internet which is breaking i i can't hear you no i'm i'm hearing it breaking up as well um but can you type because we her, cannot her name hear is you kristen yeah, oh kristen yeah sorry it's so hard christian to hear you okay. yeah so maybe um, we you know no no worries can you guys uh, okay steve You have um, any question that I can help you with today? Uh, not at this time. I, I was a little late. I was uh, coming from another uh, recording, but uh, thank you for hosting. I hope to attend more in the future. Okay. And Tanya, any questions? Hi, sir. Hello. Right. Sir, I had a question related to Docker. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and Steve with us, you know, he's researching so much on Docker these days. So, yeah, it's a good time to, I guess, discuss about it. Yeah, so yes. basically, I was uh, working on an image. I have, uh, so I'm working on Business Center 16 right now. And uh, I have Im downloaded the image as well. So, this is uh, another question, basically. So, it's like, uh, I was, there was an error. The, the, the image has been downloaded. The containers are, has been made. But I'm not able to, you know, open the browser with that web client it gives. And the error which is saying, it is it saying it's like uh, fail to attach a uh, network endpoint to the container. I'm exactly not getting, uh, you know, uh, where to end up with this. And uh, so, yeah, this was uh, the error I can figure out. According to this, fail to attach network endpoint to the container. I couldn't get something from the error. Attach network endpoint. Yeah. That that error is occurring in your browser. You're seeing the message in your browser. No, no, no. When I do the inspect, no Docker inspect yeah. and the container uh -huh. ID, then I get it. Because what is happening, I'm not able to see anything. Even I'm opening that URL on the browser, the container yep. name, uh, and uh, so it's not giving me anything. No screen, nothing. It's just loading, loading, and loading. And at the end of the day, I'm just getting an error has occurred. So I'm just not landing up anywhere. So then I figured out that there's an error when I inspected this container ID. So that, there it was showing uh, detail, even detail. A fail to attach a network endpoint to container colon the I don't know this big number. Yeah, so sorry, let me know if, if you have any other tips, but I haven't seen that error, but it makes me think of the um, the network and DNS settings. Uh, that's kind of the only only option that I'm aware of at this point. I'm still new to Docker networking. It's pretty complex, but I would check out Freddy's new BC container wizard. One of the things it has in that wizard process is the option to choose what you want for your DNS setting and just make sure that your DNS setting is set properly. Um, I've, I've heard of people who have problems with the Docker networking and, but it, I, it's really hard to say what the problem is. It could be on the Docker client install it could be with nav container helper. It kind of sounds like it's with your Docker setup. And I have heard or read about issues where Docker is unable to connect to the local Docker network. And are you running the container on the same machine that you're working yes. with and trying to open the browser? Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, it sounds like a local Docker network configuration issue and, um, and you use the nav container helper to create that container? Yeah, actually, I, I also look to, you know, the Freddy's blog. In there, he yep. has mentioned to, uh, you know, the upgrade the nav uh, container helper module to a mm -hmm. somewhat a different level version. 
so i was figuring out this to you know how to update that i couldn't do because i was going through all of this stuff you know where to yeah. uh, search all of this issue but i couldn't uh, i don't know actually to how to upgrade that or, or you know update the net yes. uh, nav container helper okay oh so yeah that's easy yeah and you recorded about it right steve yes so, yeah? uh, just in the last two days i i did a uh, a couple days i did a video on my basic docker commands and i also just did a, a i think i have two blog posts on docker commands and right. specifically around updating nav container helper and what can happen if you don't update it properly powershell can have multiple versions and when you try to True. run nav container helper it can accidentally use the older version so um let me see if i can find my blog post you need to make sure yeah. to clear out the old versions and make sure you only have the latest version installed. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so I have a blog income? post. It's called okay. update dash module for nav container helper, but you want to find the um, uninstall Docker. first, right? Yeah, you want to find the PowerShell command to list your module versions, list all of your modules, and you'll see how many nav container helper uh, versions you have. And that is. Um, get dash installed module nav container helper and uh, yeah sarav can type that out get dash uh -huh. installed uh -huh. with ed module um, nav container helper okay, and this is critical uh it is so yeah. easy to have the wrong version installed perfect get installed module. <laughs> and so 702 this is and, and this is fun. yeah yep, this is his yeah. this is actually an older version which it may work but you might run into some weird issue and so there is a command called update dash uh you uninstall it first steve or no, always update you it? don't need to if you use update dash module uh update dash module and then use the dash force command in my yeah. experience so far and, and checking with others, that should work. So you'll do update dash module nav container helper dash force. What will this do? What will this do? Update module? This will update your uh, container helper to a high to the latest version. Okay, right. so right now I am having it uh, um, 0.7 0.7 09. Okay, 09. 09 is not an, a really old version, but the latest version I think is .13. 13. Yeah. And right. now I don't know that that'll resolve your your Docker issue, but okay. I, that's the, the first thing, thing. Yeah. Yeah. That first thing is update. I okay. use the update dash module dash force. And the one thing I've done is when Docker goes haywire, I delete all of my images, all of my containers, make sure everything is cleared out. And I start over with a fresh, con fresh image, fresh container. And so, try I updating at dot thirteen. Look into the new generic images and artifact uh, methods. I have a blog post and video on that. Uh, yeah. It's not not too hard. It's kind of seamless for you. With the new dot thirteen nav container helper, use his new BC wizard. That'll walk right. you through the script creation process. I just did a video on that yesterday. Super simple, makes your life easier. Um, but I'd be curious how you resolve the network issue. I have exactly. not run into that, fortunately, and it may be difficult to resolve. You may need to, like, I don't know, uninstall and reinstall Docker. Yeah, if, I, and if, I, if I'm resol resolving this, I will definitely, uh, you know, uh, tell you guys that what I'm, I I did and what all this. Even this, I guess this can help. This upgrade, this updating yeah. this uh, version, this can help really. Because I went so, to Freddy's blog as well. There also he was just like he, you should upgrade. So maybe yeah. it can help. Right, and the other thing that I always do is instead of setting DNS on every time I build a container, I I set it up default here. And this works for ah. you know, all my containers. So I don't have to go and set it every time. I make sure that it's set on my Docker engine. So then I skip my DNS parameter. OK, I'm not uh, able to actually see the parameters. Can you just maximize a little bit? OK, so it's just uh, two lines. One is this DNS, and then this is the generic one, 8888. Okay. And this applies, I guess, to everybody. 
So you can just add these lines in your Docker engine uh, section. In the so if I'm not trial. wrong, this uh, this UI Docker UI is uh, there available on uh, it's on uh, Windows 10, right? For working, this is this on Windows 10. Yeah, this is mine is Windows 10. Yeah, right I'm now. working on the server Windows uh, 2016. Okay. Oh, so, Windows Server 2016. Yeah. Yep. I so I use Docker Enterprise on Windows Server. Personally, if you're going to oh, use right. Windows Server, I would recommend getting Windows Server 2019. Right. You need to have build 1809 or higher. And I think build 1809 might be the latest build for Windows Server 2019. But I would recommend going with Windows Server 2019, build 1809, and make sure it is fully patched and fully updated to the latest version. Just did a video on this yesterday. The build yeah. number of Windows really matters with Docker and the BC containers. I would not try to use older hardware or older versions of Windows. You're just asking for trouble and you'll spend hours fighting it. Just start with the latest hardware you can, the latest version of Windows you can, and that will just rule out all sorts of version specific issues. Yeah, and, and the whole point is that uh, when you create a Docker, it takes kind of base image from your operating system. And uh, if I'm not wrong, last week, Freddy posted why the change is happening to Artifact. And there is a reason behind it. So, yeah. you know, uh, Steve did a recording. I, I just watched it maybe two hours ago where he explained about this issue, about that build number. And, you know, updates are very important. And even if you go back in history where when Docker started, the first thing Freddie said was that your Windows update should be up and running. Your computer should be with latest update anytime you plan to use Docker's. Okay. And even if it doesn't resolve it, go to uh, uh, GitHub and there is uh, a forum where you can report specific questions about Docker issues. Report it there. Uh, there are people who will surely reply you there on that. Yeah, GitHub. I, I surely go there and just see. And I'm, I'm just going to post in the chat. Um, that's my Twitter handle and my email. Um, okay. So if you look at my Twitter profile, you can see the videos I've done just I'm, the last I'm two days on Docker. Him. OK, yes. so yeah, take a look at those videos. And feel free to DM me on Twitter if you have any questions. But okay. I think unless you're on the, a, a new version of Windows, like Server 2019 or higher, the latest Windows 10 build 19.00 or something, um, it's really tough to troubleshoot unless you're on a really new version of Windows. Yeah. So can I ask another question? Docker? Go ahead. We have time. Yeah, we have half an hour. <laughs> All right. So the other question is, OK, I have this. Be, um, let's let's oh, think that I have this image right now. And uh, if I'm upgrading, if I'm adding something to my extension, right? And so mm -hmm. what is the right procedure or a right approach uh, to also add those? If I made changes in my extension, those so those extensions also should come in my image. The, those updated things which I have done in my uh, extension. Uh, I the changes that so there are two pieces of it, okay. and uh, um, you know others can add as as they do it or they understand it. The way I understand it is the code that you are writing is mm -hmm. not stored in the database as it used to be in the older versions of Dynamics Nav. You should use the source control every time, you know, mm -hmm. either a Microsoft Git or GitHub's or any other source control software that you know. So the so source code is independent of your database. Okay. The only uh, the only thing that Docker provides you is a, a PC. Consider it as a PC with Dynamics Nav or Business Central installed. Okay. And even the, you you write your code uh, in Visual Studio Code from your machine, not inside the Docker. You just connect yeah. to the Docker where you are where you want to publish that extension. True. But the source code lies to your machine, and then it should go to the source control software. And anytime you build your new uh, Docker image or Docker container, you can always 
pull the extension from your source code and publish it in the docker okay so, so every time you know, i'm adding something extension i have to update my docker image as well if i'm not wrong no Is you it? are not no okay. so you yeah. build let's yeah Steve, go ahead. No, no. You, you publish it, right? So within VS yeah. Code, you hit publish, and it put it compiles and pushes that new updated extension into your BC Docker image that you're pointing to. So it's like, what is the command in in VS Code? Like Shift F5. I I don't remember it, but Control when you publish F5, it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. When you do the compile and publish, it kind of magically pushes it to your Docker container that you're pointing to, and then you can pull up that page. In in a Business Central in your Docker image, and it will show the latest version. All right. So this is like automatic. Essentially. So it's actually not, and there there's a logic behind it. And let me open my VS Code. So and let me know if it is a small. I I can zoom it in. Okay. So this is one of the extension that I'm working on, and. So the way it works is uh, based on your launch dot JSON, right? Yeah. So your launch dot JSON tells when you do your publish, this details in this file uh, are used to install your extension. Yeah. So right now it's pointing to my local server. Yeah. Uh, and the service that I'm pointing to is called test. Okay, which is this service, which is which will be mapped to one database. In mm -hmm. this case, that service is mapped to test database. Mm -hmm. So based on this service and this server, it understand where it need to publish it. So let's say I publish it in the test, and then I have a different service here. Let's say called prod, and I also want to publish it in prod. I just need to change this to prod. Mm -hmm. And this port number is important, as in, and this is only for Dynamics Nav, non-Docker environment. If you have Docker, it's same, but in this case, it's seven two four nine, so I'll change it to seven two four nine. And now, I, if I hit publish, it will actually go and publish this extension into the database which is mapped to the service. Right. Right. Yeah. And there are PowerShell commands which you can use to, you know, publish your extension if you are just building it somewhere else. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I maybe we quickly check what happened to that job queue which we were running because we set it to running before as that was the first question. Let me refresh this. So if you see it was running. So I don't know Rohan is not here, but he should be watching the recording and we'll see that it's not getting deleted. It's running as expected. Okay, anything else? Nothing? Um, Go ahead. Kristen Hosman says you. thank you, by the way. Oh, welcome. Yeah, so the other thing which I wanted to talk about, and I guess other than Steve and Christian, uh, everybody here is either a nav developer or I had been in past a nav developer. So I have one I was... question. Go ahead, Sahith. Yeah, yeah. So regarding, a, I mean, uh, the approval process. Sorry? Approval process. Approval process, OK. Yeah, I saw some of your videos. Actually, I made some comments there. So once once my scenario is that uh, there is uh, one approval, and then later there is another two approval. So right. first approval will approve it, and and after approval approving, uh, the second two, either of the second two can approve. That makes sense. So, so and, yeah, that's uh, the scenario. First one will approve, and then. Uh, from the uh, layer, uh, the, either one can approve and the uh, process will be over. Okay, so let me uh, log into my Docker container if I can, and then I'll share my screen. Okay. 
okay current where I kept it okay So the first thing with the scenario that you are explaining, you can only use, if I'm not wrong, the workflow user group. It is not possible with the uh, approver type, uh, approval chain or approvers. The only possibility with your scenario is the workflow user group. Yes. And if you have seen that video, uh, there are two ways to handle it and let's see once it logs in, in one is that you can define the workflow user group in a way that the sequence is one and for the next two it's two and two so the first approval will go with the person with sequence one and let's now it's open so let's see that uh, workflow user group So right now for the demo, I have created these two approvals, right? And they are set to one. <clears throat> so let's assume that I want uh, admin as to be the first approver. I'll make it one and these two as two. Yes. So in this case, what will happen is admin will get the first approval request. And if he approves it, then these two will get approval request. And if either of them approves it, then it gets approved. Yes. So the only change that you'll have to do in your workflow setup is like this. Workflow. As I said, disable it. It's already disabled. Okay. At this point, when you choose your workflow user group, which is demo one, which we just set it up. Because you will have at the max, you want two entries, right? So you need to make sure this these pending approvals are changed to one. Because wh when you request a approval, there will be three entries at the, to begin with and let's quickly see it maybe there are no other questions here so right now if i go to my sales orders and i use one which is still open let's say this one So if I request approval of it and say send approval request, the approval request is sent and this is pending approval. If I navigate and see what approval entries are created, you will see that the first entry is open for admin. Okay. And then uh, these two are created. So once this get approved by approved by admin then these two will be open and as you have defined the sequence as same any of them approves it the document will get released does that make sense Shahid? yes yes so yeah just make sure that your two things you need to set one is your workflow user group But you said something like this uh, one person as sequence one which is the first approver and then two secondary one as sequence two and then change your workflow to have pending approval count as one so that because one will be left alone you want one to approve and then one will be left alone so you need to change it to one thanks okay anyone else have any questions nothing okay so i have another question, have another question. 
go ahead uh, yeah this approval process actually uh, mm -hmm. so when uh, we send the approval request i mean the uh, requester uh, the uh, order i mean or the documents uh, i mean are locked automatically by the navigation uh, system mm -hmm. right so right. Uh, uh, if now my scenario is that uh, i like to change so uh, so before approve approving i'm not able to change i mean the request right so uh, like my scenario is that this is the this is the default uh, scenario but my uh, requirement is that uh, i like to change uh, when the uh, approval uh, i mean uh, Give me the I mean uh, permissions to approve it. I mean like uh, when approval re release it, we can change, right? So yeah, so the way system works right now in either Dynamics Nav or Business Central is that when you send and request for approval, only fields which get logged or cannot be modified are those which will impact the financial value of that order because your order is getting approved based on financial values like how much quantity uh, what's the unit price and things like that will stop you from changing not everything if you have a custom field which you want to change you can always change it even if it is under approval okay so it's you know the way it's coded is again uh, based on the fields that microsoft uh, wants to lock down when you when the document is pending approval. So the way Microsoft handles it is that if you go to your table and design that, you will see behind certain field there will be a test field for status. Okay, so. And this is where the whole workflow logic runs from. When you change it, it's kind of change its status to pending approval. And you will see this code plays in so many places. Not in the header, but in the lines for sure. If you are using the older version. In the newer version, how Microsoft handles it is there is a table or there is a page which is called as record restriction or restricted record yeah so whenever a document is requested for approval if you remember the workflow design the restriction there is a response which says to add it to a restricted record let's see it here so the first thing is add record restriction What's actually happening against this response is it's getting stored in this table. Record rest restricted record table. Which means that nobody will be able to change it because this is right now restricted by a workflow. So Microsoft have code inside the system that you cannot post it or you cannot change it because there is so what's uh, Microsoft does when you change a field it checks that is that record exists inside restricted record and if yes then it blocks your uh, change so you'll have to work around this if you want to fulfill what you want around the restricted record in business central okay got it okay yeah uh, related another question can i go ahead go ahead i have 10 minutes yeah. more yeah so another question is i mean uh, like uh, uh, we can uh, uh, go with the approval process and sales order uh, purchase order but uh, for payment uh, like i like to restrict some payments you like to restrict some payments like uh, yeah so, some range or so payments don't have it i'm not sure let me see I think payment should have workflows. Let me see. I knew that there were some. But if I create a new from template, 
journal journal batch approval journal journal line approval there are two that you can use to uh, restrict your payments like if i use a batch approval okay then i can define that which approval of journal journal batch is requested and you can define which batch so you can name the temp template let's say payment so any payment journal entries that will go will now be restricted with an approval required and then it'll check that is it balanced or not and then it'll follow the same like restriction approved approval and all does that make sense uh, yeah yeah so if you I, enable I, this right now you can you can follow the same processes and this will be the same like in this, it's at the second step, what type of approver you want. Let's say direct approver or a specific approver. And let's say that is approver one. So that is, I mean, uh, like uh, general journal or payment journal, both I can, right? Yeah, you can. You can just define your templates here. You might want to create another one, two, one for payments and one for journal journal. And you can enable those. So this one is for this payment journal and then you can create a new one if you want for journal journal. Okay. And you can define it by batch or by line. You have that flexibility also that every line should be approved or the whole batch should be approved. And then in this one, you can say that my template is journal. So now it's journal journal and it's activated. Yes. Yes. So anytime a journal or a payment journal entry will be called, the workflow will be triggered. Anything else, guys, girls? Thanks, many thanks. I will I will try this actually in my scenario. My environment. Sounds good. I will try those. Um... No help for uh, upgrading that map container. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. And let us know if you yeah. are able to make it next time. We'll surely talk about it. So, so. Thank you so much. Welcome. And for the next meeting, you can, you know, I, I see so many questions here and there. So what I did is I consolidated it here. So you'll see the past recording links as in today's recording will be added here. And then the link will get updated. Uh, maybe by tomorrow. All right. I prefer that if you put your questions earlier, it makes more easier. You know, in in some cases, if I have to do some research, I can do it during the week. Yeah, and I, then, I missed this this time. This time, this in the questionnaire. That's okay. Yeah. So yeah, if there is nothing else, I guess that's all for the today. And then enjoy your weekend. Sure, sir. You too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks.